Hello everybody and welcome to the next edition of my developer interview series. Uh, it's actually the twelfth one already. Sit back and relax. We have Henrik Konzak here. Hello, welcome. Hello, Markus. Thanks for joining me and uh, spending the time on another developer interview. Uh, what's your favorite? What, what are you guys working on? Tell me. Um, uh, favorite topic? Okay, so so in general, you know, I'm uh, mo most interested in uh, messaging, middleware, and you know, stuff around this. So anything related to uh, middleware, messaging, so you know, that includes microservices, uh, camel, and cloud stuff for deploying all this uh, middleware and stuff like this. Okay, so you're working for Red Hat. Yeah, 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 and I'm working for Red Hat, uh, but I'm now not working in the engineering. I'm working in the GSS, that's, uh, that is uh, the engineering support division at Red Hat. So basically, uh, I'm working with Red Hat customers to help them to deliver the solutions based on the um, open source messaging that Red Hat is supporting. Okay, and that includes a bunch of projects, right? So not only yeah. Oh, but also? Oh, so so uh, I'm uh, generally working on uh, with JBoss Fuse. You know, Fuse is the name of the product. So uh, there are several open source technologies uh, under the hood of Fuse, and it's Camel, it's Apache Active MQ for for messaging, it's Caraf, Apache Caraf uh, for the container, and uh, uh, is CXF Apache CXF for exposing web services and many other, <laughs> uh, but not not so important open source projects that are included there. In general, because this integration product, so uh, we include many, many, many open source libraries, uh, and we ship it with Fuse, uh, uh, and we integrate them with common stuff. Perfect. Um, you've recently been giving a presentation at ApacheCon, right? What was yeah, that all yeah. about? Oh, the name of the presentation uh, was uh, Apache Camel uh, in the belly of the Docker whale. Uh, and uh, basically, the presentation was about uh, uh, using uh, uh, Camel embedded, embedded in the uh, Spring Boot uh, and uh, deployed as a Docker image uh, to create a kind of microservice to uh, 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 to perform some operations on the uh, messaging. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so basically that's all. And uh, part of the presentation was you know at this uh, small demo that includes Active MQ to uh, Camel microservices and MongoDB that was demonstrating how you can orchestrate this stuff together to create you know small uh, messaging system. And actually uh, you know I got this uh, example here in my IntelliJ, so I will demonstrate it later on. <laughs> so we can see, you know, how how this stuff works. That's pretty cool. I mean, uh, Docker is is hot right now, right? So what was oh, yeah, yeah. up in, in the complete Fuse universe when it comes to um, to Docker and Kubernetes and, and stuff like that? I heard that uh, Fabric V2 actually has some great concepts. Did you get a chance to look at them already? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, uh, I, I used to contribute some Spring Boot related stuff to to Fabricate version one, uh, and now I'm also now looking into the Fabricate version two. Oh, actually, Fabricate this is another important part of Fuse. I, I forgot to mention before. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but basically, uh, it's something like. Uh, uh, Few months ago, uh, project management for uh, Fabricate decided that the project will uh, focus on the uh, Dockerized deployments uh, because previously, in, in the previous version of Fabricate, you were able to deploy uh, applications to almost everything. You could, for example, execute, you know, uh, fat jars or deploy to Tomcat, to Caraf, uh, and Docker was only one of the options possible. But in Fabricate 2, it's something like uh, you uh, have to use Docker, and th those Docker containers are are orchestrated on the Kubernetes, and on the top of the Kubernetes, uh, there is Fabricate that you know make using that Kubernetes uh, much easier. Uh, so yeah, you know I, I think that this is you know this part of, part of general 
trend in the in industry that you know everybody is uh, embracing Docker, and you know it looks like in two years or something you know uh, nobody will remember that it was possible to deploy anything to the production without the Docker. So yeah, but I'm personally you know uh, I, I'm really a fan of the Docker. I like this technology, and I'm really happy that you know that it got so wide adoption because uh, it solves so many problems that you know we have to struggle <laughs> in the industry. Okay, um, you got me pretty excited about that. Well, you you told me about a demo, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me a little oh. bit more and show me something, please. Uh, okay, so maybe uh, let me share my screen uh, and I will show you the demo and talk a little bit about this. Okay. So that's my IntelliJ. Okay, so maybe uh, let's start, you know, without some <laughs> scientific background for the demo. So basically, I will uh, tell something more about this before uh, I will show it. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, basically, uh, this demo consists of uh, four uh, Docker processes. Or, 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 you know, I will maybe try start that demo in the background. Demo. Okay, you will start there. Okay, and now I will talk about this. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm doing right now is that is uh, building uh, some camel microservices and uh, starting them. And uh, the first uh, Docker process I'm starting here uh, is uh, ActiveMQ broker because uh, I'm using ActiveMQ here to communicate uh, between the camel microservices. Uh, you know, usually in the microservices world, uh, people used to uh, use uh, REST uh, for that purposes, that, that is for the communication between microservices. But I think that, uh, you know, REST is cool, REST is easy, it's, it's standard, but I think that the messaging is even better option for uh, communication between microservices. You know, it provides um, uh, uh, asynchronous communication, uh, high reliability, and uh, and stuff like that. So basically, I think that you know it's worth to consider uh, stuff like ActiveMQ for uh, for communication between microservices. So I'm starting ActiveMQ broker uh, as a Docker process. Uh, then I start first uh, Camel-based microservice that will uh, use um, Netty HTTP connector to com uh, to consume um, uh, messages from HTTP endpoint. Uh, so basically, whenever we, for example, open uh, the uh, web browser given uh, on the given URL, we will generate a message. Uh, that message will be forwarded to the uh, ActiveMQ broker. Then another Camel microservice will pick up that message from the ActiveMQ broker, and it will write it down to the MongoDB service. And MongoDB uh, server is uh, the fourth uh, the Docker process I'm starting here. Uh, OK, so maybe uh, let's start. Uh, uh, with looking at the code at the first microservice, so that's the one that uh, exposes the HTTP endpoint and forwards the messages uh, to the ActiveMQ broker. So uh, it's uh, that module, and basically, um, if you take a look at this, uh, that all the code we need. <laughs> so you know, it, it's a really small demo. And uh, th this is something I actually uh, really like about it because uh, I'm taking advantage of Spring Boot and uh, Camel here. So Spring Boot, you know, uh, is the project from uh, Pivotal from Spring Guys, uh, uh, providing some convention over configuration for uh, for Spring uh, application development. And I really really like it because you know it uh, allows you to get rid of the boilerplate that you usually have to include in the in the application like that. So basically, this is all, really all we need in order to uh, start uh, th this kind of application. Here I'm telling that I would like to you know, start that application. And here I'm telling um, uh, Spring Boot that it should use uh, uh, some camel root. Uh, this part of integration is handled by uh, uh, code that is provided with a Camel Spring Boot module. And basically, we are using Camel DSL here to start uh, HTTP endpoint. Uh, so we can uh, open browser on this URL. Uh, then we will set some you know, random 
body because we would like to see you know various random messages coming into uh, into our system and then we forward that, forward that to the uh, JMS broker and that's uh, basically all. For example, this is the whole configuration for the ActiveMQ uh, client, so you know, it, 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 it's, it's really not complicated. Uh, and what we do, uh, they, I think that another important part is here. So we are basically using something called the Docker Maven plugin. Uh, this is really nice stuff it's because this plugin is able to uh, uh, take the artifact you are generating in your Maven project. In this example, this is fat jar generated by uh, the Spring Boot. So you can take that fat jar and you can add it to the some predefined uh, Docker image, and then publish that uh, image, you know, with your uh, artifact embedded into it. So, uh, so it, it, it's really nice and it makes it much easier to distribute your uh, fat jars using uh, as, Docker, as Docker images. Uh, and then the second part of the uh, the second microservice that is part of the demo is uh, also pretty small. <laughs> so that's basically all. So it consumes that messages that we send to the ActiveMQ broker. Uh, then we use some Groovy DSL to create uh, some domain object. Uh, in this case, we are creating the invoice. So, you know, this is uh, just, you know, kind of small domain object because <laughs> we need something to save to MongoDB. And then we are using uh, Camel MongoDB integration to uh, send that uh, invoice to the uh, MongoDB. Uh, all right, so I... Uh, I think that now the demo started. So, okay, let's start, you know, with uh, connecting to the uh, HTTP endpoint. So just, you know, a friendly reminder. Uh, so if you recall the first, uh, uh, the first uh, common microservice we created, we exposed that uh, HTTP endpoint. So we would like to connect to it. Okay, I'm connecting to it, and basically the response I received uh, is that uh, is the confirmation that uh, uh, this random ID has been created and the message with uh, that ID has been sent to the ActiveMQ broker, and now in the background, if everything works correctly, uh, Camel is supposed to pick uh, that, that uh, two messages from the ActiveMQ broker wrap them into this invoice object and send them to the MongoDB. So let's try to connect to Mongo. Okay, and let's see how many invoices we got in our database. Okay, so we got two invoices, so everything is working correctly and that's good. And we might also like to take a look at them. So as you can see, uh, here is the that ID we created and uh, we calculated some uh, random net value for that invoice. Uh, okay, so you know, that basically <laughs> demonstrates that demo is working as expected. And again, if we take a look at the Docker processes we are currently running, we should have, yeah, the problem here is that, you know, we got pretty much a <laughs> big font, so it's, uh, we can see it well. But basically, uh, we got here uh, uh, something like four, uh, four Docker processes, and the first one is uh, that uh, uh, Camel microservice processing the messages. The second one is the uh, uh, HTTP endpoint that is consuming the messages from, from the browser or from the curl. Uh, and here is uh, the ActiveMQ broker, and here is the MongoDB. So uh, I think that, you know, in, in a, another important part of this demo is that uh, I'm demonstrating here that you can start your databases and external services like, for example, JMS brokers using uh, Docker uh, images. And this is really cool because, you know, I don't have to set up anything here pure to the demo. So, you know, I don't have to create a database or anything like that. And also, for example, if I would like to clear all the database and create, you know, just uh, another database with different setting, uh, settings and no data, you know, it's really easy to uh, to do it, uh, and much easier definitely than using something like yum or apt-get uh, from Linux to uh, to manage stuff like that. Uh, okay, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. 
I mean, seriously. Yeah, so basically, you know, uh, okay, maybe it's capturing for the moment. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, that's basically all for the demo. So, you know, demo is really not big, but, you know, I think that this is the important point of that demo because it demonstrates that with stuff like Docker, uh, Spring Boot, uh, Camel, and ActiveMQ, you can create, uh, you know, working and functional um, uh, messaging solution uh, with, you know, just few lines of code because, you know, it, it's not something like, you know, I got the many hidden classes there and I'm not showing them to you because, you know, this project is really so small. And for me personally, this, you know, this is something really, really amazing because uh, I personally really hate boilerplate and I, for example, you know, hate when I have to configure some open source project or server because I can start to use it or deliver something uh, meaningful. Uh, so, you know, for me, something like, you know, I, I can create uh, uh, the solution including JMS, Docker, MongoDB and stuff like that with just few lines of code, few lines of DSL. This is personally something amazing to me. And this is something that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to share, uh, you know, with people use, uh, with my blog or Twitter, you know, to, <laughs> to get them excited about this because uh, it, it's something like, you know, bringing the uh, the race-like model to the Java world. You know, uh, in Java world, we used to you know, create all this XML description, descriptors, all this uh, terrible stuff. And now, you know, we can be cool like the Rails guy and, you know, still creating systems that are, you know, scalable and, you know, enterprise-friendly. And enterprise-friendly basically means that, you know, that um, uh, some big companies are, you know, willing to, you know, spend much money on them. So, uh, you know, I think th this much different, you know, comparing the Java world and the Rails world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it looks pretty compelling. Like, you have a microservice, like, it's a camel route, right? Mm -hmm. and yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it is running in its own container. So, basically, you can spin up microservices and redeploy microservices. Um, there's not much missing to the to the overall story. It looks pretty decent uh, looking at what yeah, yeah. all the microservices hype is, is all about right now. So, um, I'll make sure to include some more links to your blog and your Twitter handle and uh, hopefully to a GitHub account uh, where you have that demo up so that people can uh, check mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, I can just say thank you for being my guest today and taking the time. So hope to talk to you soon. I guess we run into each other at uh, DEF CON in Bruno. Yeah, yeah, it will be something like in two, three weeks. Yeah, so we'll get a chance to talk. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, thanks again for, for being here. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Bye.